video is on the one time I yelled at Graham. Graham, I, I paid him to help me to go through and review evidence with me and to basically be a witness to events that happened in court and things like that and also at my mom's house because I knew how that was going to go. It happened how I figured it would. It was actually a little bit nicer thanks to my little sister Tara. She's she's starting to tone down as mom, you know? I mean, she had a long period there where she was just a really mean person. Very vindictive, very controlling. Lied for positioning. But that's something she learned. That's not who she chooses to be. My little sister does not choose to be that person. That's what she learned from my mother. And my sister doesn't want to be my mother. She wants to be a good Christian woman, not a fake Christian. Who only uses the Bible when it suits her. My sister is trying to be the best kind of Christian she can be. To love everybody. Now with Graham, that day that, uh, or that night before my grandmother's funeral, when that call came through. And he went out and talked to them before the officer came in and talked to me. I was wondering why it is that the cop really didn't seem to be caring and didn't really seem to be seeing it like it's a, a major situation. And I'm trying to explain to him that, I mean, first of all, there's a dead body involved. And this is an officer who I had tried to speak to about the situation prior on several occasions. And he had blown me off. And, um... Uh, I didn't know his name before that, or I'd have uh, fucking told all of you. But they didn't do their jobs. And I went down later on, and I went into Scott DaCosta's office. He's the sheriff there in Dual County. And I told him that I needed to talk to Officer Anderson about what happened that night. He let me know that I couldn't because Officer Anderson was no longer there, and he was in a different state. I found out later that he got pricked with a heroin needle, and it turned out that he had more heroin in his system than you get from just a simple needle prick to the finger, and so they tried to brush it under the rug. So this officer was addicted to heroin. Now, when I talked to Scott DaCosta, he gave me the video, the video of that conversation. It's only half of what happened. That officer came back. We had a full-on conversation after that officer came back. And I needed that officer to make a fucking report about it and make a statement about it. And Sheriff DaCosta apologized to me. He said that it was against the law that um, Officer Anderson did not make a written report about the incident. And the thing is, I needed that written report. I needed him to make that written report to the best of his recollection at least, as well as making a statement to the best of his recollection about the times that I had pulled him over or flagged him over to speak to him. Um, this is about the time that Scott DaCosta realized that I was going after one of his officers for not doing his job because, see, these officers... All of them in Chapel, Nebraska, should have known what was going on. All of them should have known that I was being threatened, harassed, and stalked. But the officers that I flagged down, they ignored me. And trying to be tactful with Aunt B while she's talking about poop is difficult, so I'm trying not to blurt it out. <laughs> Scott DaCosta says that he's going to give me the video. It's normally $5 for the CD, but he's going to give it to me for free because his officer fucked up. So I watched the video, and uh, I get to the part where Graham is talking at the very beginning, and he's saying something to the officer about, the officer is asking if it's just one of those things where I need somebody to talk to. No, it's not something that I need somebody to talk to about. It's a dangerous situation with a dangerous man, and one of my very good friends, even though she hates me, might be at risk. This man is a dangerous man who has tried to kill his ex-wives. And I, I got screenshots from uh, 
Natalie's mother, Rose, she didn't agree with me about most of these people when I said that I thought Danica was a good person and Shelly was a good person and Tim was a piece of shit and uh, Ted Bollinger is the worst at all of them. And Rose said, you know, we, we disagree on everyone with the exception of Ted. Ted belongs in prison for the rest of his life. Ted also has the power to intimidate all of those women. And he's got children with those women. Imagine what it would be like for those children growing up, knowing that their dad is in prison for raping their sister who's dead. It's a very fucked up situation where cops didn't document any of it. They only documented the parts after the fact that she was dead. They documented the parts that tried to make me look bad, but left out any of the parts about anything that they did wrong or anything that I had been saying to them about their fellow officers. Their body cameras will show a different story. And I think Amanda Jonas was lying about not having body cameras or recording it. That needs to be requisitioned. That's something... Because of the whole president thing, that's something you'd think that they would want to record, isn't it? How about the recordings between me and Jai Rogers on the 29th of December of 2017? Let's see what's in those. Also, I want to go through the text from Natalie to see if at any point in time she told anybody at all that I was a child molester or a rapist. Did she tell uh, Joseph Lopez that I'm a child molester or rapist? That'd be 111 text messages to go through, why wouldn't it? I need to requisition those for court. And after I've read them, then I'll get to know more of the truth than any of you. And the only person I'll be willing to share it with the only two people I'd be willing to share that information with if it's not allowed to leave the courtroom, I'd still break the law to let Alicia Bollinger know and to let Rose Kelly know what's actually in those messages, in all of her messages. I'll know which ones are her friends or scammers, which ones are skeezers, which ones are superficial, which ones were just trying to get into her pants, and which ones were genuinely trying to help her. <clears throat> I'll know who she loved and who she hated. And I'll know why she did the things that she did. I, I live in a different world than you guys. You see all these people that are puking off of heroin withdrawals and all that that I I've been running into? Yeah, I've been recording those people in specific. Those people are the ones who know what Natalie was going through. Most of the women who have been in my vehicle have been raped. Possibly all of them. I think probably all of the women who have been in my vehicle in the last month or two um, all told me about being raped. Whether they were on heroin or not. Whether they were on meth or not. I should have been allowed, constitutionally, legally, I should have been allowed to confront my accusers. I should have been allowed to make a report. Those officers should not have been allowed to do any of the things that they did without a body camera present and without a representative present for me because of my disabilities. I don't have the money for a lawyer. And you know, when I was in Jai Rogers' office, I signed over my rights in his office over that case. Do you know why? Because I wanted Natalie found. I wanted her safe. I offered all the money that I had. When I, as soon as I found out she was gone, she was missing. I offered every penny that I had to get her somewhere safe. That video is still up there.
including the hundred dollars I got from Kingy to go see my therapist that you guys say I wasn't trying to get any of that kind of help. Bullshit, I was seeing three therapists. Jeff Ritter and Nicole Peralta are the two main ones. Nicole Peralta was the one who dealt the most with autism and myself. And really, the woman from that who needs to come forward is Tamara from Region 1. She no longer works there, though. Just like uh, Officer Jordan Anderson no longer works in the chapel or the Dual County Sheriff's Department. Um, there's another woman. I She sent me a friend request when Natalie disappeared. And she worked at Peak Wellness. It turned out that the place that I went, Peak Wellness, it, uh... It turns out that she used to work there. So before I left Cheyenne, I tried to get a hold of her. Especially since Rom was gone and all of that, I figured this woman might be able to help me in ways that these other people weren't. But she got back a hold of me after I had already gotten to Tacoma here. Always a day late and a dollar short. I always get those shoes after they amputate my feet. Like, here's the light at the end of the tunnel, and I fight, and I fight, and I fight to get there. You know, it's a uphill battle to the light. It's over jagged rocks and sharp stones. And it takes time, and it takes resources, and it takes energy, and I climb to the top of it, and they shut the door. And I'm in the dark again, and I'm wishing I was dead. And another door will open a couple miles away. And I got to go follow the light, hoping that when I get there, the door will still be open. I miss my loved ones so much. I do. It's different losing a loved one versus not seeing any of them. It's different for Alicia losing her sister versus if she wasn't allowed to see any of her loved ones. If she was locked up and her mom and dad didn't care to come see her, didn't care to come visit her, and nobody else did, she would have a small idea of what it's like to be me. If she was in jail being little for a girl, I'm little for a guy. In that jail, I still stuck up for people bigger than me, and I stuck up for these people, two people who are bigger than me, and multiple people who are bigger than me. I didn't back down. I protected more than one person in that jail, and I'm proud of myself for that. 